What is going on, Panthers Nation? Carolina Dad here, back with another episode. This is a normal episode for the week because there's just been so much that has happened that I said, hey, you know what? I'm still probably going to do a live stream in just a little bit. But it's like, let me do a full episode, folks. We need a full episode to digest everything that's happened over the last three days. And now free agency is officially official. Players have been cut, players have been traded, and players have been signed. We have players coming in, taking visits. I'm going to get you caught up on all the latest news with the Carolina Panthers. Where do we start? You know where I'm going to start. I'm going to start with our good old friend, Brian Burns, who, as I listen back to the presser, I don't know that he's too high on his time here in Carolina, which, hey, you know what? I'd move on if I was him as well. Fresh start, take it. But here we go. We talk about the trade. Brian Burns, plus a fifth round pick this year. Pick 166, traded to the New York Giants in exchange for a second round pick this year, which is pick 39, a fifth round pick this year, which is pick 141, and a 2025 pick, fifth round pick for next year. Not quite the haul that we could have imagined, what, a year ago, two years ago, nowhere near it. But I went on ESPN Wilmington this week and I was talking to a good buddy, Randy Slack, and it felt like in, you know, listening to others that this was the move that the Panthers were backed into, you know, Dan Morgan has ties to the GM there in New York or some of the front office. And I don't know that the Panthers had much of a choice. I don't know how many suitors were in the market, and I don't know if they would have paid what they wanted to pay. But pretty, I guess you call it ironic. Ironic's probably not the right word, but it is pretty ironic that you go through this process, and then as soon as he gets traded, it's confirmed that he's got a contract waiting for him. He gets his $30-plus plus million per season, and everything is fine and dandy. At the time when this happened, I was frustrated. I was frustrated that we did not get more. I really hoped. I was like, can we snag a first-round pick from New York? So this was once we knew he was being traded. And you follow that up and I'm like, okay, well, what's the compensation for this package? What are we getting in exchange for this? As the dust is settled and we're going to talk about the draft picks that we have here in just a minute or I guess towards later on in the show, we'll look at the draft picks that we have and I'm actually okay. I'm okay with where they, you know, what we got in exchange considering the circumstances of the situation. So Good riddance to Brian Burns. I hope he does fantastic things in New York. Like I've said with other players that have left, unless we are playing them. Like if you're if you're playing us. Now, it does leave a really big gap. A really big gap on the defensive line, outside linebacker position, edge, as you would call it, defensive line, interior defensive line, not so much, but at the edge position. And so now we're hearing rumors, and I'm going to kind of jump. I was going to do this later. We've got Jadavian Clowney taking a visit. And, you know, it was somebody I talked about last year. I said Jadavian Clowney should be considered for the Carolina Panthers. We weren't a serious team. We didn't go or talk to him. He goes to the Baltimore Ravens, collects nine and a half sacks. Nine and a half sacks at his age. I know Baltimore is one of the best defenses in the league, and They've got a lot more playmakers than just him. But nine and a half sacks is a pretty dang good number to be carrying with you. And more than what Brian Burns had. So I don't see how the Panthers, if the number's right, you get him closer to being home in South Carolina. If the number's right, like, let's find a way to make it happen. He would be one of the veteran presence on that side of the ball. On the edge, we're still going to need more. And you talk about other names that are coming up. Chase Young, we know who's coming in for a visit. I know people are probably, you know, up and down on him. Like, you know, there's folks that really like him, folks that don't. I'd be a fan of it. He's young enough to develop, close to Brian Burns' age. I know he's had some 
injury issues. I know he hasn't performed as well as some some people want him to. But I think you could take him and Clowney, and then I know there's a lot of underneath it, but you take those and you also draft. I do think we still have to draft and, and bring someone and develop them because the likes of Barno, Johnson, Leota, Villain, like I don't think – I would love for one of those guys to step up. I don't know if they will be able to and make that jump, but I'm all about strengthening up the defensive side of the ball as we let some pieces go. Other name that's that's being brought up or, or coming for a visit is DJ Wonum. I hope I'm saying that right, out of Minnesota. And you go back and look at him. He's also got pretty good stat line. Not any, you know, anything fantastic, but like last year played in 15 games, 62 total tackles, 33 solo tackles, eight sacks. I'll take eight sacks. I think if we can get two out of three of these guys that are coming in, and I know that's a bit of a bit of a wish list for me to want that, but if we can get two out of three, maybe if you get Chase Young. I take the one out of three if you can get him. But ideally, a pair of Clowney, DJ, throwing in Chase, one of those. I, I'm all for it, man. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. Y'all know that I will be updating you as we move through this process. Now, speaking of trades, that was not the only trade. Late yesterday, news broke the Carolina Panthers. Trading, t- trading Dante Jackson and a six-round pick, pick 178, to the Pittsburgh Steelers for Deontay Johnson in a seventh-round pick, which is pick 240. I don't care about the pick swap. We drop down to the seventh round. We give them a six-round pick. Who cares? I, this is this is work. This is a master class at work right here. Dante Jackson, if you follow the show or if you're just outside of Panthers Nation, or you're in tune with Panthers Nation, you know Dante Jackson was rumored to be cut. Cut or traded was the thought, but we knew coming up on the 16th, the window was running out. We were running out of time. For us to flip this, or I should say the front office and Dan Morgan, to flip this pick from someone who is leaving and you're not going to get anything for him or them and Dante, to get a receiver that has capabilities that we have not seen the ability to get open the ability to catch the ball get yards after catch i was like this is a dream come true freaking dream come true like he could compete for the for the number one wide receiver position i still think we need to address you know through the draft and if you've heard the news calvin ridley isn't coming here maybe you get a marquise brown but i know it's funny, last year I talked about the wide receiver room being crowded. That was what I talked about in the wide receiver room. It looked like freaking dog crap once everything settled out. So I don't care how crowded it gets this year. Bring in anyone and everyone. Dante battling a little bit of an injury this past season. 51 receptions, 717 yards, 5 touchdowns. Longest touchdown was 71 yards. Previous year, 86 receptions, 882 yards. Didn't have a touchdown. It's pretty odd. 2021 breakout year, 107 receptions, 1,161 yards, eight touchdowns. Consistent, consistent receiver. And if you watch some of his highlights, go back and look at some of his film, he's exactly what we need. He's a guy that can run a vertical route. He's a guy that can run deeper routes and a guy that gets open. You looked back at the ESPN can't remember if it's called ESPN open score or how open the wide receiver is. He's ranked number one over the last three or four years, like combined. Dude can get open. We need playmakers that can get open so that Bryce can get the ball to him. My goodness. And now when we talk about the news with, we talked about trades, I guess I was like, well, you know, yeah, let's segue. When we talk about Bryce Young, let's talk about the acquisitions, the players that were brought in to help Bryce, help Bryce and not just Bryce, help the offense, help the defense. Starting off free agency, hot, hot, hot. I couldn't believe it. Robert Hunt, guard, massive contract. Damian Lewis, guard from Seattle. Again, I told you to watch him because of the ties to Canales. Sure enough, we bring him over guard. Two 
ginormous guys to fill up the interior of this offensive line. And you talk about, I hear a lot of people talking about the model, the Drew Brees model, how was Drew Brees helped? Well, Drew Brees was helped by having a strong interior so that he can step up in the pocket. And that's what you're doing. That's what you're establishing with this. We'll have years to know if we paid too much or the contracts were too long. Those are the things that are, you know, always sit in the back of my mind, just watching this like year after year as teams cut guys. But for for what we have today, I don't think you could have asked for anything better. You also think about Tua Tagovailoa, a smaller quarterback as well, who had Robert Hunt there on the offensive line. It also, I like the ability that it's going to hopefully bring to the running game. Hopefully, right? Hopefully we get that. And sorry, I was just taking a note as I had to pull this up. So someone else I, I needed to talk about. So you establish the interior of the offensive line. And now it does leave a question, a question around. And I had it pulled up and sure enough, I pulled it down. So give me a second. There's still some gaps, pun intended, right? Pun intended as we talk about the offensive line and there's gaps and schemes and protection and covering (laughs) offensive line. So looking at the updated line, a few things have happened. One, Bradley Bozeman has been cut. Bradley Bozeman was cut. Him and his wife, great folks for the city of Charlotte and the community. You know, like I said, he was the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for the Carolina Panthers. I wish him the best. Just wasn't a good fit this year. Makes sense to move on. But with the shakeup of bringing in Lewis and Hunt, you now look at the line that we have. And again, you remove Bozeman. But now you got two guys that were starters here two years ago that are looking at backup roles. That I don't know, is one of them a trade asset, potentially, to one of these guys? I mean, if I'm... If you can convince them to hang around and stay happy and not being a starter, being a swing guard or swing tackle, whatever it is, like by all means do it. But as we go down the tier, some of these other guys are definitely on the hot seat. We talk about Austin Corbett. There's rumors that he, and I can't validate it, I'm not on the team, rumors that he may be moved to center. That's what I'm hearing. And I think that makes sense. If you can keep him in his talents and he stays healthy, sure, move him over to center although we'll talk about it here i do think i'd like to draft a center but we'll see brady christian's another solid target i mean it is it is mind-blowing this is another thing i've talked about on the show with the with randy is this offensive line icky brady bradley austin taylor moton last year one year ago today i was touting you were touting if you're a panthers fan all the national media, the local media reporters, the beat writers were touting the, the offensive line is is secure for two years. So we've got this line locked up for two years. We saw the success of the running game. We're like, oh, this is just perfect situation. And look at how quickly it crumbles. I would think Brady and Austin is safe, but it's hard to say. You never know with money, with just the situation in the locker room. It does put a lot of these second-tier, third-tier guys at risk of being cut. And very early here, but Cade Mays, Chandler Zavala, J.D. Durenzo, Nash Jensen, and Ricky Lee. We've got, I guess, really their work cut out for them, or at least the coaching staff does in making these decisions. Because, yeah, talk about crowded rooms. This is a crowded room. Most teams, again, carry around eight to nine, really nine offensive linemen throughout the year. And we know that some of these guys likely could go to the practice squad. But, yeah, talk about a a quick turnaround and a change. So I mentioned that Bradley Bozeman is cut. I think we should also talk about the other cuts, which is Von Bell. What a surprise, man. Von Bell cut. Out of the group of people, I was like, that guy's safe. Like, he was probably one of the better acquisitions of the last offseason. I know he battled injuries and he wasn't always available, but... Man, you move off of him, and again, Hayden Hurst officially cut. So this is all official. This is not rumors. Bozeman, Bell, Hurst cut, officially reported by the team. Again, those things could not start until the league year 
and out, you know, began today at 4 p.m. Eastern time, which today's March 13th. What a time, man. So we talk about the offense, what was brought in. We talked about, no, I didn't talk about everything. Amir Smith-Marset, he's coming back. Raheem Blackshear, also on the list. He has been tendered an offer by the Carolina Panthers. He is, I have to go back and tell you my notes. That's the one benefit, man. I'm glad I did this. He is an exclusive rights free agent. He has less than three years accrued. So this type of free agency comes into play when a player's released from their rookie contract. Yeah. So I don't I think that pretty much means we have the rights to him. So we'll keep an eye there. Because I've always talked about needing a third running back, anyways. So Amir Smith Marset, Raheem Blackshear. Now let's move to the defense. Let's look at what was brought back. One brought back Troy Hill. Troy Hill officially brought back, which is great. He's more of the nickel. You could maybe call him cornerback two, but he does play more into the nickel role. Then on the defensive line, great signing in Ashawn Robinson. Really good run stopper. You pair him with Derek Brown, and I can't wait to see what happens on that side of the ball. Last year, played for New York. Had 62 tackles. I was seeing if he had any sacks. He didn't. He was more of a run stopper. 62 combined tackles. Has ties to Ejero Ivero. Hey, Ejero's getting rid of Burns. He's not, but Burns, Luvu, Itor Grossmato. Some of these guys are leaving. Hey, can you let me get some of my guys? Sounds like that's what happened. Troy Hill also. Troy Hill, I know he came last year, but has ties. Another one on the list with association with Ijero Ivero during his time in Denver, and that is Josie Jewell. Josie Jewell. Guy's a solid linebacker. He's not a Luke Keekley by you know any stretch of the imagination here, but he's just a, a very solid player, and I went and compared his stats with Frankie Luvu's stats. Pretty similar. Pretty similar when you compare them head over head now I think pass coverage was a little bit different but not that much kind of you're off the ball we still have Shaq I still think we need to address linebacker through the draft I don't know that you know there's really another free agent I'd love to get Peyton Wilson or Cedric Gray I know those are local guys that I have you know rooting interest for but those are the guys that I look for but very good signing there another guy tied to Ejero Dane Jackson actually had ties to Buffalo and Dan Morgan. Apparently when Dan Morgan, when they went and drafted him in whatever year, was it 2020 or 2021? It had to be 2020, I'm guessing. Dan Morgan pounded the table, is what's reported, for Dane Jackson. So you bring over Dane Jackson. Now Dane Jackson, I don't know if he is truly going to be cornerback two. I look back at his stats. He played in 15 games last year, started six, had five pass deflections, one forced fumble, 39 combined tackles, 34 of them solo. And I don't think, yeah, no interceptions. He had three interceptions his entire career. So, yeah, I don't know if he's like the the home run that we want at cornerback. I still think cornerback is going to be a position of need. That rounds it out, folks. That rounds out signings, cuts, tenders, trades, visits that are coming through. The only other thing that I was going to talk through, well, I guess two other things, is position of need or needs. Again, you all know me. You know my philosophy. I don't like to do – I did three mock drafts, but getting into these like enhanced mock drafts for me, I'll shake them out after free agency. I probably could do one right now, but I'll, I may wait do that this weekend not now but like i could probably do one like in this week so i may do that and then see what happens as we start to get the stragglers but i still think wide receiver i'd still love to get another playmaker a younger playmaker inside linebacker outside linebacker and edge it's a must whether that's free agency or the draft or both i think that's a need tight end i'd love to get a playmaking tight end no font still available if we're talking free agency i'd love to look at the draft cornerback and a center still think we need a cornerback and a center but talking about players and visits 
and people coming in. We are starting to get reports of, and I'm writing my notes, folks, while I was doing this, getting reports of some of the top 30 visits. And again, each team can bring in their top 30. It's, it's their choosing of the prospects that they want to bring in. And this is a mixture. It's guys that they think they're going to draft, or it's also guys that they may be recruiting to come in. That's just what I learned last year as I went through the process. Because you'll look not at who's on the list today, but further out as, as this happens, you'll see some of the guys that are being brought in that are not projected to be drafted at all. And last year, a few of the guys that were brought in ended up signing to the practice squad. Bumper Pool, who did not make the roster, and Iku Liotta. Panthers also brought in Bryce Young, duh, and Jonathan Mingo last year. So I, I tell fans, you know, this is my second year doing this. Watch these visits. Take notes. Because if you want to be prepared on draft day or, or post-undraft, you know, signing these undrafted kids, that's who you watch. But we've got three confirmed, although one of them I couldn't officially confirm, but I saw reports anyways first one though for sure marshawn neeland who's an edge outside linebacker out of western michigan really like him as i talk about edge and outside linebacker and what he could bring brendan rice that's right son of jerry rice out of the university of southern cal wide receiver being brought in what do you know wide receiver the other one that i saw was xavier worthy but as i try to go back and look at the official confirmation so don't hold me to that one yet we'll confirm but speaking of another xavier there is one thing we can talk about and that's xavier leggett out of south carolina if you had a chance i don't know if you did or not to see his pro day or to hear him talk after his pro day which is probably the bigger thing panthers brought 10 plus scouts down there to watch the folks at south carolina university of south carolina spitzer rattler not watching him but spitzer rattler there of course looked really well is what i heard i still think he could be a pretty good NFL quarterback, in my opinion, but apparently we will get impressed. I've told y'all, you heard me from the jump, that he's my pick if he's available. He is that much of a playmaker. He's not a Mingo. He's not a Mingo 2.0. He's closer to a Debo and Ayuk model, and I think that's something you need. We've got these smaller slot guys now. That's the other thing about Johnson. Uh, oh, my gosh. Johnson is Johnson is smaller, 5'10". So I do think getting a bigger receiver. Now, Keon Coleman, I know Mitchell's going to come up. Yeah. Now I'm just rambling on into draft picks and come, and just talking about who to draft and all. So I'll, I'll stop. Anyways, folks, that is all I got. I will always keep you all updated as we go through free agency. Appreciate the support. If you are still here, please like, subscribe, follow the channel, or wherever you get the podcast. I appreciate it, y'all. Have a